On April 8, 1665, the fishermen near Barfort, which was a part of Sweden back then but is now in Germany, witnessed an astonishing sight at around 2 p.m. They observed what appeared to be ships engaging in a fierce battle in the sky. Following this aerial clash, a mysterious dark object remained suspended in the sky. In the following days, many witnesses fell sick. Is this a case of ancient aliens fighting for control over the skies of Earth? I'm on a journey of discovery. I am seeking answers to some of the most challenging mysteries that face mankind, and many nuggets of knowledge that could bring those answers are unsolved cases and tales of the strange and unexplained. This show focuses on recounting cases and stories of unknown phenomena, mysterious events, weird places, and the unexpected. So please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts we're about to cover. Hello to everyone watching this live, to all of my first-time viewers and listeners, and everyone catching this on replay. I'm going to share my screen here and let's get straight into this case. So according to Edge Science, which is a digital and quarterly print magazine focusing on cutting edge scientific research, authors Chris Albeck and Martin Saw wrote an in-depth research paper on this particular case. So what happened? On April 8, 1665, near Starsald, a group of fishermen witnessed a remarkable event in the sky involving ships engaged in a battle amidst birds, smoke, and fire. A mysterious figure that had a human-like body structure in black or brown clothes was seen aboard a large ship in the sky, and one of the main ships from the north just disappeared, while its adversary remained visible. Then an object resembling a darkened moon, shaped like a round plate or a hat, descended, to descended towards the main church, causing the terrified fishermen to look away. Here is an actual image, well not actual, not like a photograph, but a sketch of what happened. And this sketch was actually created in 1680 by Francisci, and he depicts the scene with ships, birds, and an elliptical shaped object emerging through clouds above a church spire. And if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, the video link will be in the description box below for you to follow along with the images that we are sharing right here. So the incident was first documented in the Leipzig in 1665, which later was described in 1671 by this guy right here. His name is Jonas Schreferis in his book, Memorable Examples of the Swedish Race. And this account was a key source for German polymath, which is a person of great and varied learning, by the name of Aramis Franciski, who helped popularize the story. And that is this man right here. So Franciski's collection of new reports, while not entirely consistent, represents a fascinating narrative. And the fishermen fishing near Barfort at 2 p.m. on April 8th, 1665, observed a large flock of birds forming a ship-like shape. And this, quote, ship from the north was soon joined by numerous others, followed by a fleet from the south. But yet a fierce battle ensued with cannons, fire, and smoke. Last time I checked, birds don't have cannons, but hey, you know, I could be wrong there. And then the northern ship retreated, then returned heading south as fleets from the west and east appeared with smaller ships. After the smoke cleared, the fishermen saw the damaged southern fleet and then a man in brown clothes, flags, and another ship from the west. And this all happened in the sky, at least according to the fishermen. By 6 p.m., the northern fleet had vanished, leaving the southern ships. And then a flat, round object, like a plate or a large hat, then emerged from the sky, shining with colors akin to a darkened moon and hovering motionless above St. Nicholas Church until the evening. So overwhelmed with fear, the fishermen returned home. But then, here's the crazy part. Allegedly, they experienced 
uncontrollable trembling and immense pain in their bodies over the following days. Remember that detail? We're going to get back to it because it is rather interesting. So then the Berlin Ordinari and Postal newspapers reported on April 10th, 1665, that one fisherman had been ill and reliable citizens had witnessed the event. Now, again, that is according to the German newspaper during that time frame. And then you have Colonel von der Weck and Dr. Gessman interrogating two of the six fishermen. And then Franceschi, who we just saw a little bit earlier, noted that scholars were puzzled by the physical ailments experienced by the witnesses without reaching any conclusions. They initially dismissed the event as fantasy, stating, but since then, the oceans have been stained with so much blood that it, is, that it now appears as an omen to me. Since the event was also mentioned, in Shafaris's um, memoirs of the Swedish nation or the Swedish race, Franciski believed that it was more than just a rumor. Instead, he suggests it may have foretold the war between England and Holland. And then in this depiction of the event, as we are seeing on the screen right here, Franciski engraving presents an elliptical shape in the sky interpreted as a hat or a plate tilting as if it might appear to someone on the ground. And this was not the first time hats had been used to describe flying objects. Again, you got to remember that little tidbit because we are going to get back to that. Take some little notes, get a little post-it note, or if you have really good memory, just remember that little piece. But it gets even weirder here. So we we already covered the main chunk of this story. And let's quickly revise that. So you have a battle in the sky, at least allegedly, in 1665. And those that had witnessed it, in this case, six fishermen, a handful of them, if not all of them, fell ill soon afterward. Haven't we heard cases similar to that in modern times? The answer is yes. And we're going to revise that rather shortly. But the earliest account of this event was found in a 1665 leaflet titled An Illustrated Description of the Wonderful Strandendian Air Wars and Ship Disputes. And this was published in the Leipzig. And it says, quote, a little while later, out of the middle of the sky appeared to them a round, flat form like a plate and like a big man's hat with colors like the moon when eclipsed. It seemed to stand directly above St. Nicholas Church and stayed there until the evening, after which the sailors, now full of fear and dread, could no longer watch nor wait for the end of this terrible and suspicious spectacle. They retreated to their huts, where in the following days they found their hands and feet and their heads and other body parts burned by a great shaking. And this image that we are seeing right here is coming from that leaflet article from 1665. This is the original. And then... In that 1665 sketch stands out as the oldest and most detailed rendition that happened on April 8th. And we are very lucky to be able to see it on the screen right here. And its depiction of the town aligns more closely with the narrative. Franciski's later, more impressionable image is viewed from the southeast. But his drawing was created in 1680. So again, it happened in 65. But his rendition, referring to Franciski, was in the year 1680. In contrast, the 1665 engraving, likely viewed from the northeast or north, aligns with the reports of the fishermen anchored near Barfort, observing the object, quote, motionless above St. Nicholas Church. And from Barfort, the town would appear quite small with a line of sight to the churches pointing south. When we are looking at this case, of course, we need to consider the mentality of the people during this time frame. 
1665, the 17th century, there was a lot of superstition. And you can even say that today. So we have to think of the possibilities. What could be some mundane explanations? And according to Edge Science, and specifically the authors Chris Albeck and Martin Saw, they did extensive research onto this, putting in all of the potential explanations on the table. So let's go ahead and cover those because that information is just as valuable as the story. So according to these two authors slash researchers, while doing extensive research into the case, they looked at all of the potential explanations for the strange object and the event that took place. And one explanation could be ice halos. These are caused by tiny ice crystals in the atmosphere that reflect and reflect light, especially striking when the sun is low. However, I love a good however. Sun dogs, a type of ice halo, appear 22 degrees from the sun. And with the sun almost due west, an ice halo is an unlikely explanation. Additionally, the moon was below the horizon at the time, and the sky was too bright an hour before sunset to see a star with the naked eye. And then, of course, we can bring in the idea of Venus. Could it have been Venus? Short answer, no. Long answer, a big fat no. <laughs> but a significant challenge for astronomical explanations is the description of the object as a darkened or eclipsed moon. That little detail is very interesting. And for those that look into this case, that little tidbit catches a lot of people's attention. Well, in the 1665 engraving helps interpret this, showing a disk, a dark disk against a bright sky without rays contrasting with the, with the sun's luminosity. And so after sunset, the object was no longer visible, which aligns with it being a dark body as depicted, but contradicts it being an astronomical object. And then here's another explanation. Also, I do love this image very much. But now we're getting into a mirage. And this is insane because this still happens today in a certain kind of the way that you're looking at things or the atmosphere. It can look like ships are floating over the ocean when in reality, it's just a mirage. I've never seen this with my own eyeballs. But man, if I did, I would I would definitely do a second take for sure. So another theory for the fisherman's sighting is a mirage of a distant landscape feature, which would require the elevation angle to be very low, around 0.5 degrees of the horizon. However, such a mirage persisting for an hour is highly unusual. And with this, when we look back to that main description of what happened in 1665, this fight, war, battle, sighting, was from 2 to 6 p.m. And then one object in particular stayed from 6 until late in the evening. In this case, a mirage lasting for an hour is already remarkable. But let's say four hours, five hours, six. It's to the point where it could be nearly impossible. Now, could it be 100% impossible in this world? There ain't anything that's impossible, but it could just be right on that line where it's just almost barely. We got that like 0.01% where it says anything is possible. Mark Tasaka, thank you so much for that. If you're enjoying the show so far, hit that like button right down below and subscribe as we do three live shows right here on this channel every single week. Now, here's the next potential explanation. And this one kind of blew my mind. And it's a flock of starlings. What we're seeing right here is a bunch of birds together, and it can look like an object. To me, I'm kind of seeing a whale going on right here. It's a little, the little tail. Here's a little whale. This one could be maybe the side of a turtle or something. If you, if you have a really strong imagination, you can see any kind of object in the sky. It's just like cloud gazing. That's always so much fun. But in this case, a more plausible explanation for the vision of aerial ships amid battle smoke could have been a flock of starlings. And this description 
up to the disc closely matches the behavior of starling flocks as they gather over their roosting sites near sunset. And these flocks merge into a massive, I mean, well-defined massive, creating incredible patterns before settling for the night. And this isn't mere speculation, as flocks of birds are inexplicably mentioned and depicted in the gravings, in the engravings, in the paintings, in the sketches from the original story in 1665 up until Franciski in 1680. They, the witnesses mention they see a flock of birds in the sky and then they are seeing these floating ships having a battle. So it's a possibility. But research into whether the area was known for mass roostings of starlings revealed that the common starling is native, funny enough, to the region. And while no specific references to starlings were ever found, it's plausible that in 1665, the area had more woodland attracting these types of birds. And the spectacular flocks known as the Black Sun in Danish as the Sort Sol still gather in March and April nearby Jutland. And so the timing in early April could potentially coincide with the migration of these starlings returning to their summer breeding grounds. So that one, that one's a possibility, but you know what? It doesn't answer the question of how these several fishermen felt very sick right after seeing this encounter, wouldn't you say? Now, we could also ask the question, oh, well, it could have been air balloons, maybe, but the first hot air balloon wasn't invented until November 21st, 1783 in France. Here we're talking about Germany, not France, and we're talking about 1665, not 1783. So that one an explanation is right out the door. And in this case, you can throw the baby out with the bathwater. All right. But even though we have a handful of potential explanations by these researchers, it doesn't answer a handful of questions like the smoke the crossfire, the witnesses feeling pain and trembling uncontrollably. Now, if we look at our own little history books, our own little timelines that we do right here on this channel, because we've covered so many cases that you can probably have a whole book of timelines of all the things that have happened throughout the world, throughout history. You might have thought of the Newmanburg incident in 1561. If you did, you just got some brownie points. Or the Basel incident in Switzerland in 1566. Extra brownie points if you thought of that one. But if you're not familiar with the case, don't worry. I got you. Let's go ahead and cover that one. Because in Newmanburg, Germany and in Basel, Switzerland, two remarkable sightings occurred five years apart and about 270 miles apart as well, sharing notable similarities. Looking at Germany in 1561, on April 14th, the people of Nuremberg observed what appeared to be a battle in the sky, and they described seeing various objects, including orbs, crosses, cylinders, and a black arrow-shaped vessel. Following the event, they reportedly heard a significant crash outside of the city. And here is a rendition that was posted in the newspaper soon after the incident. So right here, we're looking at another original. We are so lucky to live in this day and age to be able to see things like this. So then the Neumannberg um, citizens interpreted this sky battle as a religious omen. And then you have Hans Glasser. He documented the event in a woodcut broadsheet reflecting the uncertainty of what it means, of the meaning with the words, whatever such sign means, God alone knows. Additionally, 
this area in Germany had other extraordinary reports, including visions of knights fighting in the sky and the appearance of three suns following a battle. When I'm saying suns, I mean the sun, the star, not like three boys' suns, but yeah. And then looking at the Basel, Switzerland incident in 1566, on August 7th, a remarkable event also unfolded at sunrise. And so numerous large black spheres were observed moving rapidly through the sky. And these spheres seemed to engage in a collision course with each other, resembling a battle. Many of the spheres changed color to red before eventually just vanishing from view. This unusual aerial display lasted for several hours, leaving the residents of Basel in awe and wonder about what they had seen. This is insane. This is during that time frame, looking at the 16th and 17th century, wild things were going on. But could we ask ourselves, was this just mass hallucination? Were these people just religious fanatics and they thought everything was an omen or angels and demons going on here? Let me let me say this. If that were the case, they would have described their incidents exactly as that, as angels, as demons. But they didn't in these reports, looking at Neumannberg, looking at Basel, looking at this case that we are covering today that took place in 1665. None of them mentioned that in their reports. Instead, they were attempting to describe it to the best of their ability of seeing objects in the skies, spheres, cylinders, ships. That was the best way they could describe it, but they, not in one case, at least that is made public, that people have access to. They do not once men mention angels or demons. God, yes. Yes, that is mentioned in a handful of these cases that we have just covered. Why? Because when it comes to an omen, when it comes to this part of the world as well, looking at Europe, yes, you're going to have uh, the mention of God even up until today but not necessarily a celestial battle. You see what I mean here? But let's look at some more modern cases that have, in some sense, some connections. So when we're looking at the Stralsund incident in Germany, with its flying plate and the subsequent illnesses, remember I said to remember that? We're bringing it back up. Because it res it has a resemblance to modern UFO sightings and associated health hazards. For instance, the 1947 Mari Island incident. So in June of 47, Harold Dahl claimed to have witnessed six donut-shaped objects in the sky. And according to him, one of the objects spitted out a type of molten debris, which allegedly killed his dog injured his son and damaged his boat this is an interesting one but it's not necessarily because they got so close to the craft that they received any kind of illnesses or poison but in this case it was more of a direct consequence because of this donut shaped craft but let's go into our next one and my one of my favorite cases of all time because when we're looking at these types of cases, of course, the one that comes to my brain first is the Colaris Brazil incident in 1977. And this took place for over six months where numerous locals in Colaris reported seeing strange lights and UFOs in the sky. But more alarmingly, many of these individuals reported suffering physical effects from these encounters, including burns, skin lesions, puncture wounds, temporary paralysis, and two deaths. If you want to know more about that case or the Mari Island incident, I have done entire shows on those going into great detail, and you can find those shows right here on this channel if you are interested. But we got to bring in one more case into this that might come to mind, and that is the 1980 Cash Landrum incident in Dayton, Texas. So after Betty Cash 
Vicky Landrum and Colby Landrum, which is Vicky's seven-year-old son, after they saw a diamond-shaped UFO in the sky while on the way home, they all suffered physical symptoms consistent with radiation exposure, including nausea, vomiting, burns, and hair loss. Betty Cash had the most severe symptoms, which required hospitalization. And so when we are attempting to compare these modern cases to these ancient ones, some things just haven't changed. And we have to ask ourselves, why? Why are we seeing these similarities today hundreds of years later? And let's say, all right, let's have a little fun here. All right, let's use our imagination. Let's think outside of the box. And you don't have to agree with me. That's totally okay. But take a second, sit back, and think about this. Okay. Let's say we we hear the argument of they're ours. They're reverse engineered. They're the military. Everything that we're seeing in the sky, it's not alien. It's not ET, but it's ours. Okay, sure. I, I, I can see that possibility. But how can we explain it in the 1580s, in the 1600s? It's, it's a bit more difficult and people don't want to go that far back because there's going to be a lot of holes in their potential answers. And that's OK. You know, people are biased. People have a narrative. I can understand that. But when we bring in those old stories and we attempt to compare it on our tapestry and we weave it in with a nice little pointy needle and some thread, we see a lot of connections and we have to ask ourselves why. Another stream of thought that we can go to is let's say let's have a little fun together let's say it is et why are they making themselves known why are they having battles is it a battle between different species for control is it they're, they're just having a little bit of fun and having a laugh and if that's the case why aren't we seeing that today in present day in 2024 or are we and it's not being reported do you see what I'm saying here? This line of thought can continue onward. And if you want to have fun and use your imagination, take a look at my music channel called Cosmic Portals. It is a space ambient music channel that will help you relax, meditate, and use your imagination to wander the universe. So if you need like a little, a little help, a little aid in music, I got you. I got you. I really do. But when we are thinking about these little tidbits, where does your mind go? I want to know personally. Please answer that question in the live chat, in the comments. I do try my absolute best to read all of your comments because your opinions, your thoughts, your insights are not only valuable to me when I have a question to ask, but it's valuable to every single person that reads your comments and they think to themselves, you know what? I didn't think about that. Thank you for filling in that gap. You see what I'm saying here? These conversations that we have are healthy. They are important. And when we put all of our brains together and we think outside of the box, the possibilities are endless. They really are. And if you want to continue the conversation, you can bring it over to my Discord server with 3,000 other like-minded members. You can share your thoughts, your insights, your experiences, and more. I know one of my amazing moderators will share that link in the live chat. I also have this QR code because we're living in 2024, baby. And if you scan this QR code with your phone, if you are watching this on a laptop or a computer, scan it and it'll show you all of the links like my website social media but also that discord server and you can just click on click on it and join it we are almost at 3k we're like 50 away i think something like that it's crazy so go ahead and join that but bringing this back on to you all right what are your thoughts on this particular case in germany in 1665 when i came across it i said no way this is crazy and of course i thought of the Nuremberg incident okay that's like the first thing that came to mind and then i thought as i was continuing to read i'm like oh my gosh low key kind of like the cash landrum incident kind of like Colaris brazil but what about you what came to your mind first when you were listening to that story and do you believe it do you think it's real do you think it has legitimacy to it or is it just a story well, please, I want to know your honest answer. Let me know in the live chat. Let me know in the comments.
All of these stories that we cover are valuable to help us understand the UFO mystery, to help us understand the UFO phenomenon. The more stories, the more cases, the more any kind of evidence that we can have, it will create a mural for our understanding. If we just cherry pick certain stories here and there that we just like, it's not going to help us. No, but if we read everything that we can get our hands on, that's going to be more valuable than just, I like this one. I like that one. Eh, I don't really care for that one. Push to the side. This isn't Tinder. No. Okay. You're not swiping left and right. It's just one way. All right. So if you enjoyed the show, hit that like button, scan this, this QR code, which a little fun fact is really exciting. Actually, actually I have several fun little news announcements. Number one it is for all of the shows that are on on this channel there will be an article as well you can find that on my website if you just scan that qr code and also on medium.com so if you like these shows but maybe you don't have all the time in the world to watch them i got articles for you that just give you a nice fat summary of it all right pretty awesome stuff and i'm excited for my awesome news okay this is my awesome news it's about patreon because if you sign up. I'm now giving out free merch. I know, but like merch that isn't even on the market. Okay. It's, it's going to be special merch every time. So take a look at Patreon. I got to do little edits there. Take a look at it because there's going to be some really, really cool stuff coming out and Puck's going to be involved. Monster Soup is going to be involved. You betcha. All the good stuff that we say on this channel, you might, you might get something in the mail that you will not find anywhere else. So that is it. Well, almost it for today. I do want to do the mentionings, of course, that we do three live shows right here on this channel. Thursday will be Mysteries of the History at 2.30 p.m. PST with Jimmy Church of Fade to Black Radio. And then on Friday will be Strange News at 3 or 4 p.m. PST. And you can find those links right here. Well, not those links, but you can find those shows right here on the channel. Or if you just scan the QR code, honestly, it just makes things so much easier. It really does. But if you are listening to this, follow me on Twitter at eyes underscore on the skies and on Instagram at strange paradigms, where I share pictures and short videos on my discord. As I had mentioned, take a look at that as well. But that is it for today. I will see you on Thursday. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.